To some people, Total Annihilation ranks as the greatest real-time strategy game of all time. Eventually, under a newly formed studio, Supreme Commander emerged as the natural successor to TA. After financial difficulties and a number of cancelled projects, the studio was sadly closed down. Following the closure, some of the key people behind these legendary RTS titles were then scattered across the industry to various development houses, and the picture was very unclear as to where the possible successor could come from. Thankfully, the situation has improved dramatically over the past several years, and we have some very credible fan projects in addition to some exciting studio releases to look forward to. Join me as we explore the games which are trying to continue the legacy started by the fantastic Total Annihilation. I think it's probably worth quickly getting up to speed in terms of the story so far and the games which have brought us to this stage. The story begins with a small studio called Cave Dog Entertainment, who in 1997 released their first game to huge critical acclaim and reasonable commercial success. That was Total Annihilation. The game's impact on the RTS genre was instantaneous, introducing several features which would become staples of the genre from that point onwards. This included patrols, command queuing, and being fully 3D. The game's approach to construction and resource management was also innovative, and something that really resonated with me. The following year, we were treated to a successful expansion pack called The Core Contingency, continuing the single-player campaign and expanding the unit base. Unfortunately, this is where things start to go wrong. Original creator of TA, Chris Taylor, left to create his own studio called Gas Powered Games, and there was a sequel called Total Annihilation Kingdoms, which was poorly received by fans and critics. A couple of years later, amidst some general difficulties across the industry, Cave Dog was eventually closed as a studio, and many of the key people made the hop over to Chris Taylor's Gas Powered Games. With all the key people now reunited, the stage was set for Gas Powered Games to carry on the legacy started with TA. The studio was ultimately owned by Microsoft, and seeing the massive success of Diablo 2 at the time, they were tasked with creating their own action RPG. The end result was the absolutely fantastic Dungeon Siege and its sequels. And honestly, it's one of the best single player ARPGs of the time. It really is a fantastic play. Feels very much like a torchlight of today and I'm very glad they made it. After around five years had passed and they'd finished creating sequels for Dungeon Siege, they finally turned their hand to making the spiritual successor to Total Annihilation. And this was Supreme Commander. This game really followed the, the blueprint of Total Annihilation and just turned things up to 11. Unit counts were massively expanded. The fully 3D element was really utilized properly with the tactical zoom be able to go all the way out for a top-down view, all the way into the most minute of zoomed-in details. Projectiles were modelled in real time, and you could terraform, you could destroy the terrain, it would change line of sight and everything else. It really was the real successor to TA. So Supreme Commander, or SUPCOM as some people know it, was a success commercially and critically, as was its expansion pack, and things looked promising. Gas Powered Games had basically come out with two fantastic smash hit franchises in two different genres. I'm sorry to say that things deteriorated for the studio after this. First of all, they tried to make Space Siege, which was an ARPG trying to continue the Dungeon Siege formula in space, which was poorly received by critics and fans alike. There was then Demigod, which was a sort of battle arena style game, similar to World of Warcraft Arena PvP, but I think it was uh, hampered by poor netcode and poorly received by critics as a result. Then they really had a make or break moment where they decided to launch Supreme Commander 2, the sequel to their perhaps most viable IP at that point. Now the story of Supreme Commander 2 kind of mirrors the story of Total Annihilation Kingdoms as a sequel to Total Annihilation in the sense that to fans it was seen as a dumbing down of the original. They tried to make the game more accessible and as a result, they oversimplified it and made it less enjoyable, less nuanced. And it was not panned by critics, but it received sort of mildly favourable reviews. So it was not the smash hit they were hoping for. One interesting fact about this sequel is that it received a number of really important gameplay patches in the months following its launch. And later reviews were much more favourable as a result, saying that if the game had launched in this state, it would have received 90 plus out of 100. 
and I think this is one of the most early examples, thinking of modern games such as No Man's Sky and Cyberpunk, where the game has been patched into a much better state after launch. But sadly, I think it was too early for people to recognise the, the importance of this. What followed after this for Gas Powered Games was a largely forgettable Age of Empires online project that they were roped into working on, followed by two cancelled games, and eventually the studio was acquired by Wargaming, and then merged into the broader Wargaming studio, so it ceased to exist as an independent studio after 2013. So that's basically the story up till a few years ago. People that wanted the TA experience tended to be playing the expansion pack of Supreme Commander with a few quality of life mods and third party tools for online matchmaking. Now, as I've been promising since the start of this video, the situation does look a lot better now, and I'm happy to share the first of the potential new titles with you. Several Gas Powered Games alumni gathered at a new studio and they launched a title called Planetary Annihilation, which very much set itself as a potential successor to the TA-style subgenre of RTS game. So this was a really ambitious kind of expansion on the TA formula. It was looking to really focus on the macro side of things and expand things, as the name would suggest, to planetary combat. So not just fighting on one map, but simultaneous battles being conducted on various planets at the same time, which obviously sounds really exciting in principle. Sadly, in reality, there were very many difficulties that kind of hampered the whole experience. The UI was frustrating, it was very hard to actually control these various planetary combats that were taking place, and it kind of just received mediocre reviews. I really wanted to love this game because it was trying to continue the legacy of my favourite RTS game. Sorry to say, it kind of left me a bit cold, and I think that was the case with many fans. And it was seen as kind of an opportunity missed. Now you may have noticed a subgenre of RTS which has really become popular lately and that is the factory simulation genre and the most obvious example would be Factorio. So essentially the focus is on very large-scale macro having an automated factory style economy. The people behind Planetary Annihilation are returning soon with a new title called Industrial Annihilation and it very much leans into this factory simulation style of gameplay. While it's very much early days and details are quite light on the ground, what we do know is that they're attempting to marry the RTS elements of TA Supreme Commander with the factory automation elements of a game like Factorio. So we're expecting macro on an epic scale, some elements of automation, and then a real focus on gigantic armies crashing into each other. So what I think Industrial Annihilation represents is again an ambitious attempt to move the ITS genre forward, to combine new elements together to create something innovative and new. So I really hope it's a good game and I'll be following it with great interest. Next up we have a standalone game which has the blessing of TA and Supcom creator Chris Taylor. While potentially not as innovative as Industrial Annihilation, Sanctuary Shattered Sun has been described by Chris Taylor as a possible successor to the games which they created at Gas Powered Games. The game is on Steam and it's also planning to launch a Kickstarter soon and what we do know at this point is that we can expect an epic scale RTS with up to 10,000 units on what they describe as large and visually impressive maps. And one feature they really are leaning into, which is something explored in the later sort of TA style games, is the idea of terraforming the terrain. So destroying the terrain. They're also leaning into weather effects, so changing the weather for strategic reasons such as freezing water and then crossing it on land units so you can sort of circumnavigate different obstacles and take advantage of the terrain. Some other mainstays of this subgenre are also present, so we're expecting to have physically simulated projectiles, i.e. every missile, every Artillery shot will be modelled in real time and will be affected by terrain and line of sight. And also we'll have the strategic zoom, which you should be familiar with from games like Supreme Commander, which is where you can zoom in to the smallest of skirmishes, all the way out to see the entire map from a very strategic top-down view. So there'll be many familiar features. 
So while this game is perhaps not taking any great risks in terms of stepping outside of the mould of previous titles, it does promise to be a highly polished and modern version of the genre, and it has Chris Taylor's blessing, so if he thinks it has potential, then who are we to argue? As time went by, and people still enjoyed playing TA, but they found themselves increasingly hampered by the game engine limitations, they started to create an open source project, which became the Spring Engine. While Spring initially was intended just to be a direct port of TA, on a new engine, free from the shackles of unit caps and the inability to add new types of units, it gradually took on a life of its own. Over time we saw various projects on Spring which tried to move away from being merely a clone of TA. These were known as forks, and probably the most famous of these is Zero K, which uh, replaced all the proprietary con content from TA with its own features, and has really been trying to develop as a standalone title ever since. One of the key attractions to Zero K is the fact that it has extensive multiplayer matchmaking support. And it also has taken a departure from being a TA clone, and over the, over the years it's introduced its own proprietary features. Some of these have been very well received, such as the technology tree. And maybe five years ago now, it launched on Steam, which I think represents the developers reaching a stage where they believe that the game is suitably polished, that it can now be marketed to a wider audience. So many fans of the subgenre will recommend to you that if you want to get started, and have a genuine experience, then Zero K is a fantastic place to begin. It really does have all the features you come to expect, so massive armies, hundreds of different unit types, destructible terrain, massively powerful weaponry, and all backed up by an engine and matchmaking system which makes it much more accessible than the legacy titles of TA and Subcom. When it comes to these so-called spring forks, Beyond All Reason, aka Bar, is the big rival to Zero K, and it's perhaps uh, a more recent project, or has come to prominence more recently. I did an entire video which really showcased BAR and my experiences with the game, so if you are interested, I'd highly recommend that you check that out. But to summarise, essentially it's a modern TA style experience, with lots of quality of life features which makes it a lot more accessible and just really you can pick it up and play very quickly. I think it's fair to say that relative to Zero K, BAR is less far along its development cycle, but in the two to three years that I've been following the game, I've been really impressed by the progress which has been made and it really is now in a state where I found it to be very polished and very playable. Currently the game exists within its own standalone launcher which you can download from the website. But the team has set out what it calls its Steam Roadmap, which is a list of features they feel are required before the game is suitably polished that they'll then publish it on Steam. So while some could argue that BAR has done less to differentiate itself from TA, and indeed some models and units do look very familiar still, I do think that the upside is, is much greater in terms of this game could continue to improve and could become better than Zero K, and a true successor to TA. So with that in mind, I am playing it and I'm following the progress of its development very closely. It's also worth pointing out that there's a really, really healthy multiplayer tournament scene with lots of community participation and guest casters and pros and everything else, including Chris Taylor popping in to commentate on one of the tournaments. It's probably worth pointing out that both of these games, BAR and Zero K, which originally spawned from the Spring Engine, are free to play and will continue to be free to play even when launched on Steam. And of course there's also the option of just playing the original games. Thanks to some sites such as goodoldgames.com, you can buy TA quite cheaply, it runs straight out the box, so to speak, on the latest versions of Windows, and it supports high resolutions. In order to really make the most of internet multiplayer, you will need to install some sort of third-party matchmaking tool but it's not too onerous, and if you just want to play the single player, or try a local multiplayer, then it runs just as it did back in the day. I've actually played quite a lot of the original TA recently, and I think it holds up fairly well. The only thing that became a bit jarring was the left and right click, which is not how you expect to see it in modern RTS titles. 
But otherwise, I thought it was a very fun experience. And some of the limitations from back in the day, such as massive slowdown when armies become larger, are obviously a non-issue nowadays. And in terms of a, a modern contender, I think that Supreme Commander, with its Forged Alliance expansion pack, and then the Forged Alliance Forever fan-made project is a real contender. It really holds up well and has many modern features. Sadly, Supreme Commander 2 is not that well received and doesn't really hold up as well as the first. So I think the definitive, the definitive experience I think most fans would tell you is to play Forged Alliance Forever which is basically the expansion pack with a bunch of quality of life fixes, many of which are centered around multiplayer matchmaking and just the user interface and facilitating things more easily. So it's definitely a winner. I would be remiss to make a video about TA and Subcom and not mention what Chris Taylor is doing nowadays, given he is the creator of those legendary titles. So Chris has started what he describes as an indie gaming studio and they're working on something called Kanugi, which they describe as a cloud-based gaming platform which runs in a browser. And they have grand ambitions to support millions, if not billions, of users. So the only thing that I can think of that might be comparable would be when Quake Live became a browser game before eventually moving to Steam. And on this platform, they're working on an RTS title called Intergalactic Space Empire, which may be in a similar vein to TA and Supreme Commander. Indeed, that's what the development updates seem to suggest. So they have a blog where they post sort of uh, quarterly or semi-annual updates on the progress of development. And I think it's fair to say that things have been progressing fairly slowly. And this is somewhat deliberate because they are focusing less so on the game content right now and more on kind of the, the back-end infrastructure to support the game. So what we do know is that Chris considers her to be three kind of key pillars to the game, which are the main focus right now. First and foremost, it's obviously the browser, because that's the technology underpinning everything. And then they're very keen on cloud and cloud storage and generative AI. So that's really kind of where they think they can uh, make some real efficiency gains in terms of automating parts of design, things like that, creating content, audio, visuals, or just sharpening details of things like that. And then of course, uh, the third piece is obviously the gameplay of the game itself. And it looks like there's been quite a bit of back and forth pivoting between wanting to have a spacefaring game and deciding that wasn't very much fun in actuality and moving much more back to sort of a ground-based traditional RTS style of game. So at the moment, there's not very much to look at, but you know, it's Chris Taylor and it looks like they're taking quite a creative approach to things, so it's definitely one to keep an eye on. I think a key takeaway for me here has been the fact that, in addition to the, the wider RTS genre really coming back to life with a huge number of exciting games on the horizon, but the subgenre of the TA style of game has really seen massive activity in recent years, and it's a very exciting time to be following the genre. We have fan-made projects such as Zero K and BAR really coming to maturity, looking at Steam releases and becoming what I would consider highly polished and extremely playable games. And then we have a number of professionally produced games which are vying for the title of the TA and Subcom successor. And several of them are taking quite novel approaches and really taking a bit of a risk in trying to innovate the genre. So I'm excited to see how those games develop, particularly Industrial Annihilation. I've really got a soft spot for that studio, and I just wish that Planetary Annihilation had really grabbed our attention a bit more than it did. One game that I've been playing a lot recently, and really enjoying, has been BAR, and I actually made a longer standalone video just focusing on BAR, and really trying to showcase the, the progress the team has made in the past couple of years. So if you're considering trying the game, then I think this video might be for you. <laughs>